Hi, everyone, and welcome to Purpose Driven Marriage Podcast, where we model kingdom marriage and we help you align with the purpose of God for your life. You are more than welcome to this uh, episode yeah. uh, of uh, PDM once again. My name is Dr. Samuel Okanda, in case you are just joining us for the first time, and this is my beautiful, amazing delicious sweet <laughs> wife yes so i'm blessing ekundayo thanks darling welcome once again you're welcome um it's been months that we've been doing this and many episodes have passed mm. and we've done quite a lot of uh, topics and we've been exploring questions we started from last week where we explored a few questions and this week we would like to uh explore a few more um and then perhaps call it a day with the question and answers all right um we would like to like we always do acknowledge people who have left us a comment on our last episode yeah. um so that uh, they know that we truly truly value their <laughs> comments so the last episode was a question and answer episode we're just going to see those who left us a comment on on the recording yes the so recording. last week we talked about we answered questions question and answers on marriage yeah you know and um, there were quite a number of comments but so far one person um has left a comment after watching the replay yeah the replay yeah. yes and that was elizabeth banky thank yeah. you so thank much you, elizabeth. yes elizabeth said thank you for doing this sir and ma the lord will bl- continue to bless amen. you amen. amen we really appreciate you amen. yes and if you're joining us just like my husband said if you are yet to you know if you not you haven't liked that post or shared this video, i mean you should share this video because there is so much to learn yeah you know and most importantly subscribe to this youtube channel yeah and when yeah. you share you don't know you could be saving someone's marriage exactly. you could be helping someone you know so feel free to share at any point in time yeah all right um whereas we understand that we've got lots of questions to be very sincere lots of questions more than we can treat and if we have to do we'll probably do like five episodes for, yeah. for those questions but we don't yeah. want to do more than two episodes but what we have resolved to do is to take those questions sometimes one by one and post them as reels on our social media platform so should you ever um you know want to you know find out if your questions got answered please follow us on social media follow us at purpose driven marriage or myself at dr sam ekundai or my wife at dudu shewa zero one very important move um all those uh names are on uh the description of this video so all the links sorry you'll be able to see them yeah right yeah so, so we just want to apologize for everyone you know if you have sent your questions and you realize that we're yeah. able to answer it in any of this episodes yeah we apologize yeah it's just because of time yeah so we're going to jump right into those questions um a few were able to answer today the first one we're going to start with someone is asking is it okay for genuine christian brothers who are ready for marriage to have relationships that can lead to marriage with two sisters mm. i have concentrated on one relationship but my sincerity has not always paid off someone have suggested that having two friends can reduce the tension of feeling abandoned or too mm. much concentration on the one that thinks you don't have options thank you mm. i believe this is a very genuine question that this person is asking, asking yes, here yes. Um, and it appears the question is born out of frustration of having to be so sincere with one sister for quite a while and the sister just you know just take, taking him for granted take they are taking for granted or just b- drop the ball you know when all his hopes were up and everything like that and that could make one feel like oh my goodness sincerity doesn't pay in this thing mm. but the good thing is you realize that sincerity is a good thing to have because mm. you mentioned it you know so it's good to be sincere with one person so if you're going to ask yeah. us that question we are saying it is not okay to be in two <laughs> relationships at the same time as a believer yes um what i would suggest is um just like we said last week if you haven't watched the episode of like please go and watch it so we described how you should actually go you know when you're planning to go into a relationship first of all it's okay to be friends you can mm. be friends with so many ladies you know getting to know them yeah. you know develop just general friendship not friendship no okay. strings attached yeah. to where you are getting to know them you're asking the right questions you know just you know but all of you are going out you know you're just you're just everybody's relaxed so mm-hmm. there is no pressure of oh he's asking this question or she's asking, 
asking this question because she wants to marry me or she, no you understand so it's out of the choice of you know out of those friends yeah. you know then you decide who you want to be intentional about in terms of going into a relationship yeah, a courtship, into courtship. With. yeah and Christian yes. we call that courtship yes yes so um but you don't begin to um court, court two girls two, yeah, two ladies at you the same know, time you uh, know yeah so when you ask people you, you go into that relationship or into the courtship mm. with an intention that you want to marry this person yeah. not that you are trying them out okay i'm just going to date um you know lady a b yeah. c d e f g and then you, <laughs> you know you play with all of their minds mm-hmm. you know that's not right but yeah. yeah and of course it may not work out yeah. that's the essence of courtship courtship yeah. is meant to help you find out if you know, marriage with that person would actually work out or not. Yes. So, you know, don't necessarily feel like every courtship must, must work out. Must end in marriage. Um, if, if a lady drops the ball and says, oh, I'm no longer interested in taking this further, um, don't feel bad. I mean, mm. it's okay. A broken courtship is better than a broken marriage. Cry so, and <laughs> pick yourself together. Yeah, you know, weep, cry, do all <laughs> you have to do. Pick yourself back up yeah. again. There are all that sisters who would joyfully, you know, who are praying to have a man yes, like you. So don't yes, feel lost. Don't yes. be frustrated by yes. that, you know, and don't have to do anything insincere or uh, anything, you know, that is not sincere because of that. Right? Yeah. It's akin to infidelity if you do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I believe we have answered the question. Answered yes, we have. The next question is out of love for money. What are the, uh, uh, sorry, outside of love for money, in other words, apart from the love for money, what are mm. the other red flags to look out for in courtship? For covenant relationship, purpose-driven marriage, if red flags are discovered during courtship, what would the other party do? When I opened the Excel spreadsheet... No, 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 uh, no, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Apologies. That's a... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. For covenant relationship, purpose-driven marriage, if red flags are discovered during courtship, what should the other party do? So, first of all, yeah. what are the r- other red flags aside yeah. from love of money? Yeah. And then, what should you do if red flags are discovered? Yeah. So, I think that it's very important to, first of all, define what red flags really are. Mm-hmm. So, red flags are things that are qualities of things that you realize that you know you cannot you know you cannot live with you know that yeah. that the other person you know possesses character traits for example behaviors or some you know um, attitudes. attitudes you know that you know that they are not compatible with your own core values mm. you know you have values but that you have like core values things that you know that you believe and yeah. that person must have in order for you to work together because the bible says that can't work together except, except they be agreed yeah. for example if you're a child of god born again believer you are practicing the faith and you're walking you're growing in god mm-hmm. you know one of your core values as a believer should be that the person you're going to get married to must be a Christian. Mm. You know, so if the person is not a child of God, that is a red flag. flag. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's what red flag is. So, you know, outside of love and money, you know, what are your own? So you need to know you. Yeah. What are your own are core, your core values? values? Yeah. You know, what do you believe in respect, in honor, you know, for people, for human beings, yeah, you know, in integrity, yes, in loyalty, yeah. all of those things. So you need to know yourself, you know, and then you can decide, okay, this person, do they have those qualities that I also value? Yeah. And that's when, you, like, if they don't have it, you know, and you cannot live with it, mm-hmm. you know, you cannot live it for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know? I mean, there are values that, you know, maybe this person, you know, maybe he has body odor, but I can deal, <laughs> I can live with it because at least there's something that we can, we, we yeah. have the, the pers- you know, the other ones that we can use to, you know, freshen up and things like that. Yeah. So, so that, those are the kind of things that, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. for someone who put out body odor is like huge red flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like absolutely. no, no, no. So you need to know yourself and yeah. know yeah what you can. What the Bible says by their fruits you shall know, you them. know yeah. them. So yeah. if you look at people's behavior, people's character, you are able to tell who they are, what they do, and so on and yeah. so forth. And then, like we said last week, you need and now ask yourself, is this affordable? For <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I afford to live with this person for the rest of my life with this character, with this behavior? Mm. You know, and because nobody is perfect, so all of no, us have some imperfections. No. But you need to check with yourself: mm. Is this what I can do with? Deal live with, by? Live by? Yeah. And if you cannot, just like your second question, ask. If you find those red flags, walk away. If you cannot deal with it, if you think it's too much for you, because the truth is, when we all got born again as believers, it's the Holy Spirit that is still working on us. 
In fact, that's why God gave us the Holy Spirit to continue to help us to become more like Christ. Nobody yes. has become like Christ yet. Yes. All of us have measures of the nature of Christ in yes. us, but we have not fully formed. We have not become the full stature and full measure of Christ. Yeah. So when you meet somebody, they don't expect them to be perfect because they are born again. Mm. So those elements that are still there, those red flags that are still there, the Judas that is still stealing, the Peter that is still angry, you know, and you know, you still find so, some of those things there. The question you now need to ask yourself is, can I deal with this? And if you cannot deal with it, you cannot marry a Judas, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and are they walking towards getting are they, better or they are just, they have a fixed mindset and, you know, they are just okay the way they are. So it's more like, yeah, this is how I am. This are, you yeah. cannot marry my sister, okay, you know, you yeah. just, then pack your bags and just leave, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And go with someone who would value you. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Just to add to it also, mm. uh, you can walk away at any point in, in time, time yeah. before even at the altar before you say your vows mm-hmm. you, if you are not convinced yeah you know if you feel under but pressure please don't let it reach altar <laughs> <laughs> if you are not convinced you know you know <laughs> but it, so. at any point in time if you it's you it's better to actually not make that vow yet yeah, yeah. because once you make the vow and you sign your dotted lines you know you've <laughs> entered into covenant of a lifetime yeah. so rather than having mm. to deal with that you know while in courtship you can still walk away if you're not convinced. Yeah, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So don't f- don't feel like because you're in courtship, it has a must lead to marriage. No. Yes. The essence of courtship is to find out whether it should lead to yes, marriage or, or not. not. And yeah. nobody should be guilty about yeah. know, breaking a courtship if yeah. you just cannot. Afford. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was, uh, we don't have yeah, so much yeah, time. Yeah, 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 but there was, there was someone who, a woman who, you know, while she was in a relationship with a, with a guy, you know, she just started having this, she, they were in courtship, you know, wedding date was already set but she was just very unsettled mm. you know, she was having she has noticed a few things and she thought this guy was bisexual mm. you know and but she didn't have any evidence mm. you know that he, she has not caught him right yes now. but she just started saying some things that ah, i'm not comfortable with this behavior mm. i'm not you know but at the end of the day because she, she was not convinced mm. you know she just walked away mm. you know rather than having to deal with it. and years after she i mean she, she got married, married then, yeah. years after she discovered that her suspicions the mm. holy spirit yeah, was true. the one yeah that's the holy spirit yeah the holy spirit yeah her suspicions were true so mm. if for whatever reason you are not fully convinced you are yeah. your peace you don't have peace there you're not settled in your spirit about mm. this person you're caught in then it's better for you to say, okay, please, oh, yeah. give me some time. I still need to pray thoroughly about this. Yeah. 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 It's absolutely okay to break off a courtship. Yeah. All right. It, what is not okay is to go and try and be divorcing in marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So, wherever the Holy Spirit is nudging you, make sure you listen. Yes. Make sure you listen. Yes. Don't worry about what people will say. Ah, people will say, ah, you guys have been in this relationship for five years. Uh, people people say, you've, you've even sent Ivy invitation cards. Ah, uh-huh. What are they going to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. Ah, look at all the people you have invited governor and president and prime minister. Uh, mm, 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 mm. No governor and prime minister and president will help you live in your marriage. Exactly. So, you know, respect yourself, respect the Holy Spirit. Yes, and, love yourself. And do hmm. the needful when you, when you, when yes. you, yeah. I pray God will help us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The next question, right? Yes. God gave you as the wife a vision to start a business. Mm. You started and later on your husband joins you in the business. Mm. Does it now become a family business? Is there a need to document things or you just run together based on trust? Mm. Next question on the same question. On this same business, the husband controls things and takes some decisions without consulting you at all. Is this right? If it is not, what should the what should be the proper way to do things? Ooh. That's it's loaded, a, loaded, question. A loaded question. Uh, <laughs> do you want to go? Yeah, okay. I, I, I believe very strongly that if your husband joined you in your business that you started, unless there is an agreement between the two of you that, okay, this has now become um, uh, a family Our business. Our business, yeah. I, um, whereas, I mean, in the unity of, of marriage, right, everything that the wife owns is, is the husband's, everything that the husband owns is the wife, to be very sincere. Mm. However, when it comes to a business that you have personally invested many years into, I think it is important to have that discussion before yeah. the husband comes to own it. Because this one looks like the husband has come to own it. And control it. <laughs> and, and dictate it. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. know? So, uh, and take over. Yeah, and take over. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, so it, it, there needs to be a discussion yes. about it. Be, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, or, oh, we are both, um, you know, going to be doing this business together now. It will become a family business rather than I'm just helping you out in your business. Doesn't alleviate the fact that both of you need to be united or anything. It just means that um, your own investment, I, I would believe your husband to probably has a job or his own business as well or something and you help him out there too and he's a, so it's, it's, it's okay for your husband to come and help you out. However, if it has to come to this place where it now is controlling everything and or you know then that discussion needs to be had and um it and it doesn't seem you're happy with him controlling everything yeah, making decisions sure. without you so it is important that you actually have that conversation and say hey uh, babe i've been doing this business before you joined um with all due respect i feel like you know i would love to actually be able to be the one to lead this business because you know, maybe I know it's better. It's something I'm more passionate about. You know, that discussion just needs to be yeah. had. Uh, I don't personally, and I don't think my wife agrees. I, we don't yeah. think it is right for um, anybody, any other spouse. It could be the husband or the wife to just now come in into the other person's and just take you know, over business and just take over because yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to have that discussion. Yeah, to add to what you said, both of you, you need to, you need to know what you want. Mm. You know, some women will be happy with it. Yeah. You know, like okay, let's my husband take over, and that's fine. Yeah. You know, but. You need to, like he said, you need to have that agreement. You need yeah. to have that discussion. You know, it doesn't seem like she wants. Yes, it from yes. You need to, so be clear about it. But also, yeah. two of you are on the same page. How are we going to run this business? Mm. Okay, I would like you to take over this part. Yeah. While I, while, while I run this part, you mm. know, and before we make a decision, I would like that we both discuss it. Yeah. We both agree, you know, before we make the decision. So both of you have that conversation, and you're on the same page. The other thing I'd like to say is that because it's a business, I would actually. I'm not a financial. I mean, we are not financial advisors mm. or legal advisors, but we want, would like to encourage you to actually have legal documents yeah. for your yeah. business. Also, yeah. hopefully, your business is registered mm -hmm. and there are details, yeah. legal documents. And dating. if your husband is joining, his name can be added. Yes, if you, want to. Yes. If, if you want yes. to. Yes, yes. Or both of you are co-partners, co co co-owners, co you know, or both or you alone. Whatever it is, there should be a legal document because yeah. God forbid, God forbid, it's, it's a scenario yeah. where maybe he dies you or know and, dies, yeah. yeah so it's your business if he dies you know and the family you know with that's with african cultures just come up and say oh it's our husband it's our, our yeah. son's business and just mm. come and pack it all yeah. whereas you are the one that has started it and sweated <laughs> over the, you yeah. know so think about it that's why legal documents are very very important yeah. you know yeah. yeah and and when it comes to some of these things we have already discussed it there are some yes. men who believe uh, I remember, I can't remember the exact topic where we mm. there's some me traditional men that believe yes. because they are the head of the woman, they can just enter into anything and control anything and just yes. whether the woman is happy with it or not. Uh, see, that word head, if, let, let's repeat it in this again, mm. means leadership. Mm. And leadership doesn't does not, does not necessarily mean authoritarian, you know, uh, kind of rulership. And all. no, that's yeah. not what leadership. Sure. Leadership means laying down your life. Service. Service. Yeah. So it's not a matter of coming to control everything. No, it's about you serving. You yeah. know. So if the husband has genuine intentions to serve, to make the business better, yeah. but in it has to be in collaboration with the person yeah. who started the business, yeah. who has put in a sweat, yeah. and you have to honor that place. You you know, yeah. you have to honor that and say, hey, honey, I have this idea that I think would make this business better. Or I think we should both, you know, be doing it together because, ah, babe, if I can even say, with, uh, you know, I have great ideas that can help you. Yeah, so if yeah. I come, if we do it together, you know, it can multiply. Yeah. And the reality is that the man can actually have genuine intentions. Yeah. You know, he thinks that he's doing all of this to help you. you yeah. know? But again, that's where there's that communication breakdown. Yeah. So both of you need to you need to speak with him, you know, and there needs to be an agreement mm -hmm. on how the business will be and run. part of honoring your wife is to allow her to allow you. Hmm. Yeah, allow her to allow you to actually come into the business and do what you want to do. Don't be that kind of person where you're just like, you know, lording it over everybody, you know, and, and you're not making decisions that she doesn't know yes. about. Yes. Yeah, that business that she started. Yeah. No, no that's not good. You know, yeah. um, I, I pray that... Um, yeah, the Holy Spirit will help that home Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, the next question. Yep. Yes, yeah. Please, thank it's, you. This was this one says, as a, a lady, 
that a man is interested in for marriage? What are the things I need to check to ensure that I can submit to the man, especially because it is what God requires? Mm. I am already busy with the Lord's work and building myself personally. How do I practically manage the waiting season for the man God is bringing? Two questions in one. Uh, I, uh, the first question about, you know, what are the things I need to check to ensure that I can submit? Mm. You know, so number one, to really know whether you can submit to a man the first thing to check is is this man submitted to god mm. that's the number one thing it's going to be very difficult for a woman of god to submit to a man of god that is not submitted to god yeah to god yeah to god that's number one thing yeah. to check so how do you know this you see his approach to the things of god you see mm. his approach to you see his relationship with god you know um if you're already in a relationship with him you can actually you know see how it, it takes god how it takes his relationship with the holy spirit mm. how it takes his relationship with god how he fulfills purpose and ministry yes. number two thing to check mm. does he also submit to anyone mm. So true. Anyone that doesn't submit to anyone cannot should not be submitted to. Mm. Because they will they will <laughs> they will be so <laughs> narcissistic, they will deal with you mm. because they don't listen to anybody. Nobody yes. can correct them, nobody can so can't see anything. anyone that doesn't submit to anyone should not be submitted to. That's mm. that's 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 the, that's the core thing. So mm. don't marry a man that it doesn't submit to anyone because you will not be able to submit to the person. You will yeah. always find it very hard. In fact, such kind of people they will they will always force enforce submission. Yes. And we have said it, yeah. you know, when we you can watch our episode submission on submission in marriage. Submission in marriage where we said submission is not dehumanization, is not yeah, um, it's not humiliation, it's not, humiliation. It's not subjugation. Yeah. Someone who is not submitted to God and submitted to other people will dehumanize you, will humiliate you, we do yeah. all those all those things that we say submission is not. Yeah, yeah. So um so basically check his character traits too, the way he relates with people, his parents, you know, his, his friends parents, and all I, of those things. Yeah. I think one other very important thing too, because you are asking, you know, how you know what to do to make sure that you can submit to your husband mm. i think it's also important that you are submitted to god so you, check you yourself yes. okay uh, you know apart from just being a christian and purposeful you know what's your character trait like because mm. you cannot be expecting a man who is submitted to god while you are not genuinely submitted to him god ha the holy spirit has not worked on you and your attitude your behavior you know how you how you relate with your parents yeah. your siblings your friends your, pastors, your pastor your mentors, so are you leader? also under authority mm. are you also submitted because that way you will know that i mean you don't just get into marriage and start submitting you know if you have not been <laughs> submitted if you've not, if not yeah, submitted, submitted yourself mm -hmm. yes so you're already working on yourself while you are single yeah. working on your submission working on pride working on anger working on all of those things you know and the way you relate to other people and so when you get into marriage it will just flow yeah you know submission is not like a switch you know no. <laughs> you know you you must <laughs> you be flip yes you must be submitting. and we have already established that it's not natural yes too. exactly so make sure that you are also submitted to the holy spirit the holy spirit is working with you yeah. and then to be easy for you to submit to you because no matter how great a man is and wonderful a man is if you are not also willing to submit <laughs> if the holy spirit has not dealt with you and your flesh then you will struggle to submit to him you would struggle massively yeah. so and that leads us to the next question i am already busy with the lord's work and building myself personally how do i practically manage the waiting season for the right man or um, god is bringing i love the fact that you're already it's beautiful busy with god's work you're also working on yourself personally all right i mean those are the kind of things you should you should be doing you know read yeah. more books read books on on um on marriage um, and relationships marriage and relationships relationship yeah. um you know have good friends you know male friends that helps you to get to know you know what the uh what the you know the male figures look like of course until your relationship comes into play you know like platonic genuine friendship you know where you truly truly get to use that to relate with you know with male figures you know in your life and you get to understand who they are yeah. um yeah, yeah also add to that that you, yeah. should, you know find role models marriage more role yes, models you know couples men, that you can you. yes who can actually and you can genuinely see that their marriage is working yeah you know because then do you be able to it will be encouraging and you can ask them questions yes you can ask them questions yeah. too yes yeah. yes you know yes, so yes. those are the, those are some of the things yeah. you can and continue to, to trust to god and pray for yourself yeah. and, and, and be spiritually pray discerning yes pray for your husband before you before he comes so be yeah. praying and not god bring my husband well you can pray that but god you know build my husband make our home mm -hmm. you'll be so insane 
seeds Pray of prayer your into your children. future. Yeah. Yes, while yeah. you are waiting. Don't just wait idly, you know. Mm. Yeah, be no, waiting on God yes. is, ne- is never uh, an idle thing. Yes. It's usually God prompting us to grow, to yes. do something within that season. Yes. Uh, yes. Towards what we are waiting yeah. on Him for. Yeah. All right, praise God. Hallelujah. The next question, right? Yes. Aside waiting and preparing myself, what else can I do as a single who already knows who her husband is? but is not sure the husband knows I'm his wife. Wow, this one is deep. The guy in question hasn't said anything or acted in any way that shows he knows something. Um, when I visit my partner's family for the... Fo- oh, sorry. Okay, that's a different question. All mm-hmm. right. Aside waiting and preparing myself, what else can I do as a single lady, I believe, who already knows who her husband is, but is not sure the husband knows I'm his wife? The guy in question hasn't said anything or acted in any way that shows he knows something. Babe, do you want to start this? <laughs> I think I find that question very interesting. Very, very yeah, interesting. Because I, I'm, just in, I'm just curious very as deep. to how you know. Yeah. You know, and then the man is not doesn't know, and you know that the man doesn't know, you know, and um, yeah, because the truth of the matter is that sometimes the reality is that sometimes we have this inclination that this person is going to be our husband or yeah, my husband, you know, but how long do you wait then? <laughs> do you wait for five years, one, two, three, four, five, ten yeah. years? What if he's not interested? Yeah, you know, so um. I, it's, it's some t- because that way it's, it's like you're already married to the person in your, in your mind, mind yeah. and you block out you know it's like because you start giving vibes to other guys as though you're already married mm, you know you like don't, you're not available is, yes yeah. you're not available you know and you cannot also force a man to propose to you or to you know ask you out in marriage yeah. if God hasn't spoken to him yes, as well yes yes are we still yeah. online yeah we are we are yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you can you cannot uh yeah you can you can't force it. Mm. So I would just suggest yeah. you know that you continue praying and trusting God. If the guy is somebody that, for example, maybe both of you are in the same church, you yeah. know, I don't know if both of you are friends. If you are friends with him, you know, but I would not encourage you to be the one to take the initiative to begin to uh, maybe ask him out mm-hmm. or yeah, because um you take uh, you, if you want the man to yeah. make the move or to take the lead you know, when it comes to a relationship with you. Yeah. So it's very important that you don't go and approach this man and say, ah, God, God has, has said, yeah, that you will be my husband. <laughs> and you should not intimidate anyone who God, well, God may have spoken to you personally yeah. because God himself will not do that. He will not force his will upon anyone. At the end yeah. of the day, they still have to decide whether they want to obey God. If, if, yes, if, if God, God actually speaks to, to yeah. them directly. Mm. So I don't think it's a good idea that it comes from you and say, God told me that you are my husband. I mm. doubt if that's a good idea. Um, it is important. If God has spoken to you and you're sure God spoke, speaks to you, then you wait. Mm. You wait. If you're able to develop normal friendship with the person, maybe because you're in the same church, yeah. in the same unit in church, in the same neighborhood, in class, you know, you can develop normal friendship and just, but don't yeah. go and say, God told me that you're going to be my husband. Yes. You know, that's no, like no, intimidating. No, don't say that. Allow you then continue to pray. I think one of the core things you can begin to do, you know, um, just answering that question there, one of the core things you can begin to do is to pray. Mm. Lord, if you have truly shown me that this person is my husband, Holy Spirit, speak to him as well. Is your son, right? Yeah. You know, I'm sure God will not tell you to marry someone who's an unbeliever. So, if if that person is God's son, say pray and say, Father, also reveal. To him. To him. Yeah. yeah. Also revealed to him, you know, and God God will do his bits if, you know. And of course, God may reveal to him and he says no. <laughs> I mean, people yeah. have, God allows people with free will. Like we talked me. about that last week. Yeah. yeah. He may say no. He may, may say he's not attracted to you. He may say he doesn't like you. He may have a reason. And that, you know. Yeah. yeah. So don't have a closed mind. So don't, don't close have your a, mind. Yeah. Because God, um, God would have probably have somebody else for you who's even better. Yes. So very yes. Important. Yes. Yeah. So like, and I, I think I just need to emphasize that you don't give vibe that you're not available um, else other guys will just pass you by you know yeah. and that guy can just be there not interested in relationship or mm-hmm. marriage and yeah. you're still waiting on it how long <laughs> yeah. will you wait yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Let's, all right next question next question yeah. right when i visit my partner's family for the first time what am i meant to do and what am i not meant to do <laughs> I, I believe this one has various angles to it yeah there's angle of culture Yes. There is angle of um, uh, appropriateness, like etiquette. etiquettes. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, so 
in terms of culture, we cannot answer that question. But yeah. what is important is you need to ask your partner mm. in their culture what's appropriate. For instance, I we come from Western Nigeria. Our culture is very this, similar. So if I go to a partner's place, uh, to I remember when I went to we, have, we were not married place. yet, and I went to your parents' place. You know the the way to behave and all. Our parents are very you know um, conservative, uh, SU, conservative, uh, like <laughs> deeply. You know, same with my parents as well. So thank God, you know, not far. You it was easy for him it was to easy, just adjust. Yeah, not far <laughs> But for instance, let's say you you come from a family that is not necessarily that conservative. And maybe in your family, everybody just g- joke with, um, you make know, jest of make jests of each other and say, ah, see, look at your big head. Um, or, 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 or you don't even necessarily um, greet in a kind of a respectful way. Maybe you and your father even just do hands on and you ch- shake and you do your <laughs> finger like this and you do that this after. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you Whereas your, sp- your partner's family, ah, you have to go on your knees to y- greet uh-huh. or things like that. You so have to prostrate or whatever. So you need to yeah. find out from your partner and ask what's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, you in know, your ho- in your, your parents' home, home your, your parents culture, home. your yeah, your tradition. Yeah, you know, you know, so that they can tell you precisely what it is. Yeah. and then there's also the what is appropriate as a believer. Mm. Yes, fruits that you want to show. Not being a hypocrite, obviously, but you would have been showing this on hopefully. a normal day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, you know, and you don't go and show your struggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, that yeah, because that could lead yeah, to a yeah. negative. Yeah, so just be your, awesome. make sure that you be yourself, you have good yeah. behavior, you know, and when you go there too, so it's always nice to go with a gift. Don't go empty-handed. Yes, so go, go there with a gift and dress decently, dress well if you're, if you're a you know, mm-hmm. lady, if no you're matter guy, what you believe about your dressing, yeah, please dress, dress well. recently, dress well because <laughs> nobody you cannot go wrong by dressing decently. That's yeah, the truth. You cannot, you cannot go wrong. So, dress decently, you know, and just be be be, be yourself. Yeah, don't yeah. do things excessively. Yeah, I could go on and on, but yeah, we'll stop there. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Next yeah. one, yes. I may I meet godly men, but never know how to build a friendship with them or show I'm interested in them. Please help. I often fear I look thirsty. Thirsty mm. means like seductive uh, or, or desperate. Or no, uh, desperate, yeah, yeah, desperate. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, the, the, to be very sincere, um, building friendship just has to come from an open mind, sincere heart. Mm. Um, and it depends, to be very sincere, on your personality. All right. Mm. If you're a very extroversial person, like I am, uh, mm. Building friendship will be very come easy. naturally. It will come naturally, yeah. you know. In fact, for me, I don't. I, don't if think I, about. Yeah, it. if I want to be friends with somebody, it doesn't cost me a thing. Yeah. I would have probably noticed something that they're wearing, and I would have complimented and say, "Hey, wow, nice this, nice that." And before you know it, oh, where did you buy it from? Where are we going? You know, and all. Yeah. Of that. Oh, wow, that collection in Greece. And before you know it, you're already talking. You're mm-hmm. flowing. However, if you're an introvert, mm. it will be very hard. Mm. This one you would probably need to learn how to do that, and I recommend the book How to Win Friends um, by Dale Carnegie. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I can't remember the full title, but something like How to Win Friends, you know, by Dale Carnegie. Classic, mm. really amazing. Can teach you one or two tricks here and there. But obviously, for before you can go into courtship with someone, you need to be first friends with them, and you need to actually uh, connect with them as a friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. and just be. And just ask general questions. Yeah. You, you don't have to go into very relationship questions, deep yet. questions, yeah. yet because you are just wanting to build friendship. You yeah. know, so get to know them. You know what they like. You know, compliment them. Google some conversation starters. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. What job they are doing, or what school they are going to, or what subjects they like. I mean, depending on what yeah. their area and allow the is. conversation to take just you flow. To, you know, you know, yeah. you know, and you know from those little little things, you will know whether this person is just going to be in the friend zone or acquaintance yeah. zone or <laughs> yeah. relationship zone you know i already like yeah. the fact that you said you meet many godly men so yeah you are talking about you come having conversations with godly men here yeah one of the what well, you already have something in common you're right to build friendship with anyone you have to have something in common at yeah. least something in common some people it's sports that they have in common some people it's the bible church mm. that they have in common some people it's a career line that they have in common some people it's a passion or interest so the fact that that person is godly means you already have something in common yeah the bible yeah. god jesus 
church relationships you know uh, of god yeah. you know and then from there you can begin to talk hey, hey, yeah. you know um how was church you know um yesterday what church do you go to yeah. oh you go to oh i like that church i've heard about that church before amazing what are some of the doctrines you guys believe in in your church you know oh in our church, we don't believe that too yeah. believe from there you start to have a conversation oh do you guys go to church on sunday or saturday you know they're different yeah <laughs> you know yeah you guys have manuals mm. for this for that for that oh great oh what's, what's your what's your pastor like is he fun is he engaging oh do you guys have also your service online you know do you have youth groups you know you start to have this sort of conversations that could yeah. lead to great friendship yes and yes yeah. so i don't know why you say you fear that you look thirsty you know is mm. it just a thoughts or you're just anxious or um, what makes you what's driving that thought that's what i'm just curious about have has, has someone told you desperate, before that you perhaps. are desperate you yeah. know so what it's why do you that someone why do you feel like that you yeah. know and it's important that you just be yourself you just know be and just yourself. be natural because friendship should flow naturally it shouldn't yeah. be forced some people may yeah. not like that fact and maybe that's why somebody may have voiced it out to you mm. before i remember when i was uh, much younger mm. I, i think i've told you this before in wellington in new zealand yeah um i was going to a church this one is church and somebody looked at me and said samuel the way you greet people you 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 <laughs> you, you, you look patronizing oh i was sad. that's Because, not kind yeah I, that was and this was in church you know um and that thing really made me sad it mm. affected how i greeted people in church <laughs> no, i'm much better than that. you know affected yeah, how i greeted nice people in see. church uh yeah. affected because I, i mean that's me i'm mm. a energetic jovial you, extrovert you've got to know my husband you yeah. know like sometimes he can be he may look like he's extra but yeah. that is he's that's just, just naturally me. that yeah. yeah yeah but if you spend time with him you know that okay this this but guy this person probably doesn't love. know me and just judge me like that you know yeah. and it, it affected me so i understand the fact that it could <laughs> it could affect you as well you know but don't let that deter you you know um, um i'm speaking from experience here mm. you know go on just be yourself because guess what there is somebody out there who likes you exactly yes, so the way you are, you are. yeah and yeah. they won't change a thing yeah. in terms of ex- our extrovert show you are i love you exactly the way you are <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right let's take one last one yeah, one last one yeah. and then we call it a day this one said are, are dating apps a sin does it mean that one does not trust god what are your honest opinions about dating apps hmm. as people who met each other online can <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not sure if uh, the person asking this question yeah. has read our story. We met online. We mm. met via uh, a social media platform called i5. i5. Yeah. That has made us to believe and look at us today to the glory of God. 11 years 11 marriage. years after of course with lots of challenges but mm. God has really helped us to where we are today. Thanks the God. the point is we have realized that we you can meet a child of God anywhere. Yeah. That's right. You can meet a child of God anywhere. Dating apps are not a scene if they are not the dating apps that are tended towards hookups and sleeping with people. Sex and stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. there are some dating apps that are purely purely they are not godly. Mm-hmm. But there are Christian dating apps. There are Christian yeah. dating websites, you know, yeah. the way you meet godly people so to speak yeah but of course you should not judge because everyone there is a christian because some people may just be a christian nominal nominally yeah so people are just they take advantage of other people yeah so they are praised they want to marry to... a christian woman yeah. they want to marry a christian man but they are they themselves are not they're given not, to god they're yes, not born again they're, yes, not, they're not regenerated yes. in their spirit so this is very important it is not a sin all right let's establish that for a fact Can you meet somebody who's godly on a dating app? Absolutely. Yes. The same way you can meet someone who's godly on Instagram, on Facebook. You know, there are ministers of God who met their wives on Facebook, yeah. on Instagram. I remember Moses Bliss met his wife on Instagram. Yeah. We met on i5.com. There are a few people that I know like that, you know, um, pastors that I know who mm. met their wives on, online. online, on social media apps, uh, even on dating apps. Yeah. It's extreme, very possible. Um, the- um, there, there's another person I know who met on dating apps and their marriage is great today. Christian. Yeah born again christian so it's very very possible yeah, yeah. just need to do your own due diligence yeah. but when if you choose to go on dating app do your own due diligence and make sure that you do not come out as desperate yeah because if you are desperate you're going to fall for anybody so it's an opportunity for you to build friendship so get mm. to know that person first yeah. of all yeah. you know it's not like we're, we're on a dating app and then we're planning to get married or we are working towards marriage that you meet someone on dating app doesn't mean that yes we are now in a relationship Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. you develop friendship you there develop and friendship ask first. critical, important. 
important questions, questions so that you can know whether both of you are compatible yeah. for marriage to so know the kind of questions and the way to navigate such a relationship uh we're going to be doing an episode very soon on that mm. um, with another couple friend of ours who are who also met online so yeah. please don't miss that episode and most importantly my wife has written a book about it titled yeah. love beyond borders you know um how to really really navigate yeah um, secrets to a successful long distance long relationship, distance relationship. Yeah. So, you know you get to understand what are the things to watch out for what are the things to do in a long distance relationship yeah. what are the kind of questions i should yeah. ask all those sort of things like that the book is yeah. a compendium of of guy uh, is a compendium and a guide to those who yeah i've also written another books called slide into my dm yeah <laughs> yeah so, so that book teaches you how to sorts. slide into some people's dm <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we met online, so there are lots of resources for you to yeah, to, to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. So, um, should we take one more? Um, just because of time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because you, I mean, if, you, if you're cool, with I feel it, like yeah. I feel like we can take one yeah, more. Okay. All right. This one is really in- interesting. It says, "I understand love is a decision, and in my opinion, love grows from when you have made that decision and on a daily basis." Which continues even in marriage. I had a chat with a friend some time ago who explained that sincere love is a decision. Mm. It doesn't grow and that and that only and and that only the likeness and fond, fond, fondness fondness and grows. that only the likeness and that only the likeness and fondness grows. Mm. I would love both of your opinions about this. What do you think? Does love grow in marriage? Uh, um do you want to start or I should? Yeah, you start. Yeah. All right. The truth is love grows yes. in marriage. It starts with a decision, and that decision is just like planting a seed mm. into the ground, sincerely. But the intentional cultivation of that seed <laughs> is what makes the marriage to last. Yeah. So if I say I love you to someone, mm. what I'm just doing right now is like the first I, time I say yeah. that is I'm just putting a seed mm. into the ground. Does that guarantee that the ma- potential of that seed will be maximized? No. I've just said it. I've just put the seed into the ground. Yeah. There's now a lot of work that I've got to do to ensure that that seed becomes the full stature and full mm. measure of, who, of of what it should really, really blossom to become. Mm. And that is where the work comes in. That's yeah. what grows. You know, your ability to be tolerant. You know, all those first contact of the 13 team uh, uh, stuffs, they appear, uh, they, they, they are very, very appropriate yeah. for, for marriage as well. Yes, yes. And to add to that, um, when people talk about love yes it's a decision you know mm. and it's a, you, you've got to be it's got a choice you choose to love especially in marriage yeah you know but apart from that is also um you, you can say i love you and that's you know i feel you you know um mm. or i study you in mm-hmm. greek, the greek words yeah but the kind of love that god wants us to have mm. in marriage is agape Unconditional yes love. and it's a consistent kind of love it's that you cannot have that love without the spirit of god so even when the person doesn't look like or you don't feel like this person is lovable mm. you still choose to, to love. love you know because you ask god god help me yeah. to love this person mm. i don't feel like loving this person my husband has hurt me so badly that yeah. I the way I feel like is like I hate him or my wife has taught me so badly the way I feel like is I hate her right now yeah. but I've got to ask the Holy Spirit to walk in me to perform his work in me to break me down myself yeah. mm. my selfish nature my you know all of the works of the flesh in my in my life that doesn't want me to continue to love my husband or my you know want you to love your wife because of whatever they have done or their behavior yeah. you know? and then you still continue to choose to love and the more you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit the more that love, love grows yeah. Yes. Love grows. Yes. So it does grow if yeah. you are willing to make it, it grow. <laughs> yes. If yeah. you can do the intentional work. Yeah. All right. We believe we have been able to answer some questions today yes. in a way that has blessed you yes. and will help your relationships and your marriage. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yes. Um, you may have noticed that this episode is not directly live, so we may not be able to appreciate anyone who's making their comments, but right now we want to appreciate you all. Thank you very much for leaving comments. Thank you very much for watching this. Thank you for liking. And if you haven't liked it yet, please like right like, now. Like, share. share. Subscribe to this yes, channel. Yes, yes. Because we are coming with more episodes like this for you. Thank you very much once again for joining. We'll see you next week. Bye now.